In this video, I'm going to show you some pros and cons of individual pedals versus multi effects. To do that, I'm going to take you through a few of the ways I've used pedals over my career, the kinds of pedal boards I've built along the way, and how I currently carry my sound with me around the world. And stick around until the end of the video because I'm going to reveal a hidden feature of the Line 6 HX Stomp that no one is using, and I think it's worth the price of admission alone. Not only that, but I'm going to be giving away the patch I demonstrated with for free. It's common for bass players to wonder what gear they need, why they need it, and how to make it work for them. I can definitely relate as I had a limited budget when I first started using pedals. And on tour with Jojo Mayer, early in my career, most of the pedals on my board were actually his. I owned an OC2, but he had to lend me the money for a Mogafoga low pass filter and take it out of my first paycheck. One of the main concerns with gear is cost. And in my opinion, the big three of multi effects when it comes to being a similar size, price, and function are the Boss GT1000 Core at $649, the Axe FX FM3 at $999, and the Line 6 HX Stomp at $699. These may seem like high prices for one unit, but when you consider the number of pedals you can replace with them, it could potentially save you a significant amount of money. For example, if you want a robust pedal board that can work in various styles of music, you may want a preamp with a DI, a compressor, an octaver, a fuzz or distortion, some kind of modulation, a filter, and maybe some delay at the end of your chain. You can go on the cheaper side with respectable pedal brands, and this setup comes in at just north of $1,000. You can go more high-end with modern boutique bass pedals, which will cost you three times as much. And if you have some really deep pockets, you could go with a super high-end vintage setup, which will unfortunately cost you almost $4,000 and really destroy your wallet. These numbers start to make the multi-effects option look a little more reasonable, especially when you take into consideration how much more they have to offer beyond a single pedal setup. I have to point out that there are places multi-effects fall way short of pedals, and I have a ton of reasons not to use them for certain things, but we'll get to those a little later in the video. My early pedal days were littered with weird boards that were not professionally built and they were constantly getting destroyed when I traveled. Through the 2000s, I was on tour at least seven months of every year and in the studio whenever I was home. I would go from playing pop music with someone like Jem to a high intensity electronic music tour with Jojo Mayer. And then find myself in the studio cutting a record with someone like Mike Stern all in the space of a couple of months. So the board, the signal chain, and the mode of transport were constantly changing. I'm going to run down my signal chain preference later on in the video, but first, I have to show you something I doubt you'd believe if I didn't still have it. In the late 2000s and early 2010s, when I was touring more as an artist and got away from the pop world, my pedals traveled with me in this tiny camera bag. 11 pedals, two power supplies, and 10 patch cables all fit in this compact setup, and I would simply toss it in my checked luggage for every flight. This worked incredibly well for improvising, but it did mean I was limited in size, I couldn't save presets, and it wasn't well protected when I was traveling. And before we go any further, don't forget to subscribe, like, and comment on this video to help me get to 100,000 subscribers by April 2023. I'm committing to reading all comments left in the first 48 hours of this video going live and answering any questions you have for me. The last video went nuts with over 900 comments and almost 4,000 likes. So let's beat that by reaching 5,000 likes on this video and put me to work answering all your pedal related related questions. For the last minute world tour in 2017, I've upgraded, if you will, to using a Pelican 1510 as I wanted both to travel with my amp and have a little more protection for my gear. Still no pedal board and still grinding the setup and breakdown every night. The setup took around 10 minutes to build and about five to break down. And creatively, it was effective because I could change the order of pedals at any time, sometimes even mid performance. And it was efficient in the limited amount of space it took up in my luggage. But as you can see, it gets old when you have to build it and break it down every night. It also didn't include multi-effects and I would travel with the weirdest combinations of pedals on the road. And the worst part about it was that when I found something that worked, I wasn't able to make it repeatable and easily accessible again in the future, especially not in any kind of compact form. 
In 2020, I decided it was finally time to stop crawling around on dirty stages before every gig and build something that allowed me repeatable options and took less than 60 seconds to set up. This involved moving to a fixed pedal board and finally integrating some multi-effects into my setup. For this board, I chose what I consider to currently be the best bass pedal in the world, and that's the Line 6 HX Stomp. You can program and save ideas every night, either on the gig at Soundcheck, at the hotel after a show, or sometimes even mid-song. I do want to add that even though a multi-effects unit does open up your options for hundreds of different effects, there are certain sounds digital effects have yet to successfully clone. The HX Stomp, for instance, recently added a Boss Octave clone, and it's not even close to where I would consider taking my octave pedal off the board. Just keep in mind that some of the things you might be excited to have access to simply won't give you the same playing experience as the original, and it's worth trying out as many options on both sides of the fence before you commit to buying them and adding them to your board. Perhaps the biggest challenge when combining both kinds of units is where in the chain to put the multi-effects. Are you using it for an octave, compression, fuzzes, or distortions? Ah, then maybe it goes more towards the front. Are you into all the modulation, delays, reverbs, and EQ it has to offer? Okay, then broadly speaking, maybe that goes towards the end of the chain. In this case, the HX Stomp sat almost exactly in the middle of my chain. My octave pedal, clean boost, bit crusher, synth pedal, and compressor were in front of it. Within the Stomp, I had multiple harmonizer patches, delays and reverbs, and my tuner and the freeze pedal, filter, and two loopers came in the end of the chain. I way underestimated what it was gonna to take to carry this thing on planes for a month in Europe. I made the board far too heavy and I totally destroyed my shoulder. I thought about nothing but wheels that entire tour. The pedal train also had its limitations for what I needed. The next step was to get my hands on some Vertex pedal boards with the hinged risers and expand the power capabilities with the Chox DC7 and the Chox 4. As a result of this more robust platform, the board now included not one but two multi-effects units with the bigger HX Stomp XL and the Eventide H9 Max. Sadly, due to its size, this board was never going to make it on the road, but it was a very cool step towards finding what worked and what didn't. We're talking a lot here about the combination of pedals and multi-effects, but where does one make more sense than the other? When you look at a player like my good friend Tim Lefebvre, he experiments all the time with tons of different single pedals, takes a setup on tour with him, not unlike my camera bag situation, and makes some of the most incredible sounds you've ever heard. On the flip side of that, there are dozens of the world's great bass players who rely way more heavily on multi-effects for large-scale touring, playing arenas and stadiums, like Adam Nolly Get Good and John Myung, for instance, using it for a large part of their live sound, and then adding in their favorite single pedals to augment their setup. Just like the over-the-top board I built myself in 2021 for gigging locally, I went four times over the top when I went to the studio to record a new album last year. Before I left, I rented a rehearsal space to set my amps up in stereo at stage volume and took close to 100 pedals to audition for sounds. I then packed up around 50 of them in two Pelican cases and spent three days in the studio in Spain with my band experimenting, improvising and programming to come up with all the sounds for my album One Way Out. The challenge then became how to get all those sounds into a compact enough form to tour with. This is where we get to what I'm using today, how I'm using the HX Stomp, and the hidden feature I haven't heard anyone else in the world using. It. Moving from the larger Vertex Tour Compact down to the Travel Light, I was able to get 12 units on the board, power, cabling, and still had space in the Pelican 1510 for a volume pedal and second looper that both sit off to the side. As you can see, there are compromises here. It's not in stereo, I can't have the Stomp XL, and I don't have any MIDI presets or switching options. But it still creates a huge sound, and the board takes less than 60 seconds to set up. Now here's the hidden feature in the HX Stomp that formed the basis of a couple of songs on my last album, and something I used to improvise all the time. We're basically going to turn the HX Stomp into a modular synth with a sequencer, and create loops and huge sounding tracks without touching a single string of the bass. Using tone generator blocks, I'm able to assign pitches to momentary switches that allow me to decide how long I want a note to last. I can program different waveforms for these notes, put them in different octaves, and even spread them out to make chords. Then, using the shuffling looper, I'm able to capture a slice of that sound and create a sequence. This can be something that stays fairly static, or it can be programmed to morph over time. 
And when you push this through a big stereo reverb, you can hear how epic a soundtrack you're able to create using just the stomp. This patch is linked below in the description of the video and is free to download. I've even included a Stomp XL version with more notes programmed on different foot switches. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. We're on our way to 100,000 subscribers by April of this year, 2023. And I have a huge announcement for the 1 million subscriber goal that you're not going to want to miss. So stay tuned for that and I'll see you next time.